ordinary scales, such as this bathroom scale, do not really measure weight, and they don't measure mass. Instead, they measure the normal force, the perpendicular force of contact, that is, how hard they're being squeezed or pressed. Here's an electronic version, interface to a computer, and we're going to see its measurements graphed live. Notice that when Zoe crouches, the normal force decreases and then increases. And when she stands up again, it increases, then decreases, and finally levels off as she is standing still. Okay, go ahead. Here is Zoe, represented by the blue box. And there are two forces acting on Zoe. Gravity, or her weight, which is pulling down, and the normal force how hard she is pressing against the floor, or in this case, the scale, and how hard the scale is pressing up against her. If she just stands there, her acceleration is zero, and the net force is zero. The normal force equals the weight, and that's why we normally think of scales as reading your weight. If you just stand there, the normal force reading of the scale is numerically equal to your weight. Am I like squatting? Now Zoe decides to crouch down, and in order to accelerate in the downward direction, the net force must be in the downward direction. How can she do that? She can't change F sub g. Her weight can't just be changed by her thinking about it, but she can change the normal force. She can pick up her legs, or try to pick up her legs. And in so doing, she is reducing the normal force. By pressing less hard against the floor, the normal force is reduced. The net force is now in the downward direction, and she accelerates in the downward direction. Now Zoe is moving in the downward direction, and she wants to come to a stop in that crouching position. She's moving down, and so to come to a stop, there has to be a net force in the upward direction. How does she do that? She does that by pressing against the ground really hard. By pressing against the ground really hard, Zoe makes the net force in the upward direction, and her downward motion stops. Once Zoe is stopped in the crouching position, she doesn't have to press as hard against the floor anymore. She just needs to hold up her weight like she did when she was standing. So the free body diagram when she is crouching and still is exactly the same as when she was standing and still. When Zoe decides to stand up, she has to press against the floor really hard. This makes the net force in the upward direction, and she accelerates upwards. Notice that this free body diagram looks exactly the same as when she was moving downward and needed to come to a stop. In both cases, moving downward and coming to a stop, or from a stop accelerating upwards, you need to have the upward force greater than the downward force. Now Zoe was moving up, but she needs to come to a stop. In order to do that, she needs to have the net force in the downward direction. Once again, she presses less hard against the ground, so the normal force is less than her weight, making the net force downwards. Her upward motion is stopped by the downward net force. Now that Zoe's upward motion has stopped, she can just stand there again, being still like she was at the beginning. The normal force equals her weight, the scale is reading her normal weight, and the net force is zero.